system flowchart example, email system. So we're going to take a look at an example of a system flowchart and we're going to draw a diagram that illustrates the use of a system flowchart and its symbols to represent an email system, specifically outlining the processes of logging in, reading emails and composing or replying to an email. Now, even before I start actually drawing this up, it's important to recognize that this email could be completely different based on the scenario you're given. So it's not just one diagram solves all email scenarios. If you are in an examination scenario or an assessment scenario, you're gonna make sure you look at your stimulus, your criteria first and address the points of that. I'm just gonna give a simple outline of operations. I also am going to show in this diagram uh, one type of methodology for approaching it. And that is just starting off by drawing the processes in, the linking processes. And from there, add then your other symbols that correlate with those processes. So let's get started with it. So I'm, I'm going to start with my processes. And as you can see, the first step would be you log into the system. From logging into the email system, I then can read my emails. And then once I've read my emails, I can compose a new email or reply to a message. So they are the foundation for this diagram. Okay, you don't have to start a diagram this way, but this might be the best way to start it logically because I can already clearly see what the processes are. Now with each process, I'm going to actually put the other symbols that correlate with them. So let's firstly start off with the logging in process. This would involve okay, an online input of login details from a user. Okay, they enter their login and they enter their password. And then what the system needs to do then is check those details. It needs to validate it with the cloud server, their Gmail account uh, or their Outlook account and see that that login and password is correct. And if they're correct, they can then get into their inbox. And then we get to process two, the reading of the emails. So when reading the emails, well, how do we actually get that email data? Well, firstly, the data is stored in the inbox, all right? And that inbox, we usually call it a client inbox. It's been downloaded from the server and stored on the user's device. All right, but then that's already alluded to my next point that there needs to be syncing taking place between the client email inbox and the cloud server downloading those email messages so that they can be read by a user on whatever their device they're viewing their emails on. But then we've obviously alluded to we're getting the emails, but I still can't read them. The user still can't read these emails. Reason being, the emails need to be displayed. Okay, so online display of messages to users. So it actually comes up on the screen of their device and they can actually read the emails and view their attachments. So that would be the reading email process covered there. And then the final area we're gonna address is process three, the composing or replying to an email. Well, firstly, we need online input of the message from a user, whether they are composing a brand new message or replying to an email, okay, they need to enter their data into the email. While they're doing that, they are viewing the message on screen and they also will get a confirmation once the message has been sent that it's been sent correctly. What also might appear on screen too, specifically if they're replying to a message, is the actual email message they are replying to. So there's quite a lot of online display happening as the user is typing up their message. They can obviously see what they're writing and seeing what they're replying to. Now, once the message is created, it is then sent. And what I've done is created a separate cloud server because this is the recipient server. They might be affiliated with the same email per, uh, group, okay, such as Gmail, but they might be using a completely different email uh, service for their emails. So that's why I've used a separate cloud to represent the email. And also it made it a lot easier for me to draw, but it, it, that is logically makes more sense that they are sending it to a separate service, okay, for their recipient because it covers whoever the recipient may be. It's just not the same one that they're using, but it could be still. So I'm just highlighting that area there too. So that message gets sent. And then once the message is sent, it then gets stored, okay, in the client's inbox, okay, as a sent message. But it's not just stored there. It would also then be synced online too with the cloud email server. All right, we already have that connection existing. All right, so the sent message gets stored as well. So I hope this video has given you an introduction to how the system flowchart symbols can be used to represent an email system. And what we tried to show here too is if you start off by just drawing your processes in a logical sequence, 
the rest might be easier to come together from there, okay? But obviously this video is giving you a bit of an introduction to obviously the use of processes, the use of online inputs and online displays, how cloud servers represent platforms outside the systems that are stored online and are connected with telecommunication links, and then local storage as well for the storing of email messages in an inbox. So I hope the actual diagram makes sense to you and is helping you understand the logic of system flowcharts.